Hello and welcome to the National Highway Accelerating Low Carbon Innovation Program Application Support Webinar. I am Agat Parwa and I'm an Accelerator Program Manager at Connected Places Catapult. I will be presenting today's webinar and this uh, webinar will enable you to get all the information you need uh, to apply for this opportunity. Next slide, please. So here you can see today's agenda. Uh, we are going to start with a safety moment uh, presented by Imran Donjua, and then uh, we'll move to an introduction to uh, Connected Places Catapult. Um, we will then uh, hand over back to um, uh, to Imran, who will uh, give uh, an overview of national highways, and then we will have uh, Melissa Gusti, uh, who will explain the challenges this program is looking to tackle. Um, at the end, I will, I will present this program in more details, uh, what's on offer, uh, and how to actually apply for this uh, opportunity. At the end of this session, we will have some time for questions and answers. Uh, please note that this webinar is recorded and you will have access to the recording uh, once uh, we will publish it on YouTube. Um, just before I hand over to, um, uh, just before we move to the safety moment, sorry, uh, I just want to say that we are very excited about this new project we are delivering in partnership with National Highway. Uh, we have developed a strong relationship with National Highway uh, over the past few years. We've been working closely with them on a number of projects and we are really glad uh, to be uh, one of their uh, delivery partners. But so now we're going to move on to the safety moment. So we're going to play a short video uh, and then we will have uh, Imran Ajandra talking a bit about it. Thank you. Cliff Richard was top of the hit parade. Petrol was born from Sir Gallen. The Mini was born. And Ernest Marples, then Transport Minister, was the man of the moment as he opened Britain's first motorway. So here are my two suggested mottos. First, take it easy, motorist. And second, if in doubt, don't. Oh, you can go as fast as you like, you know. It's just, uh, it's not driving, it's just sitting there, isn't it? Well, it's quite fantastic, as a matter of fact. I, uh, I just didn't know how fast I was going. You just keep on wanting to go faster and faster. You just, you just can't help it. What speed did you do? Well, I got up to 100 on the clock, but, uh, I think it was probably about 90, you know. They always do you ever think you could do it in this car? I didn't think the beast could do it, because nothing doesn't go at 30 very well. But the cars didn't match the enthusiasm of the drivers. Former AA patrolman Don Woolhead, seen here in a promotional film, remembers. When it first started, it was just like a racetrack. Everybody trying to get to the other end first. There were a large number of breakdowns because it was something new. The, the cars those days weren't built for the continuous speed. We had a large number of uh, holes in the side of the engine, big ends knocking out, a large number of vehicles that we were towing off. In those days, the motorists, they didn't seem to take notice of the warning signs or anything like that i mean the uh, all right the, the accidents on a motorway these days are serious but in those days we seem to have a larger amount of cars involved when there was an accident i mean it started in a november all right the first year we got fog people hadn't drove on motorways in the fog of course it should have been the safest road in the country but no there was an accident happened in front people still kept tearing along in the fog and uh, consequently, sometimes we had over a hundred cars involved in accidents. I mean, you could stand there and you could put flares out to try and warn them. You could soak rag in petrol and throw out to try and warn them. In fact, at times, I've stood there and threw a gallon of petrol across the carriageway and set fire to it to try and warn them. But still, people still drove through it and you could hear in the fog the bangs of more crashes happening. Nonetheless, a carnival atmosphere prevailed. Good afternoon all. So as you can see by the safety moment, is time has changed a lot since then. So it's important to innovate due to these reasons, so to improve safety, reduce congestion, improve efficiency. So you can see nowadays we don't chuck petrol across the carriageway. We have the gantries that would have signs on there. So that's, that's why it's important for the new ideas to come in because we'd have older vehicles integrating with the new vehicles that will improve safety. So that's why we're one of the safest motorways in the world. But I'll go into stats and facts later on. I'll move back to Agatha. Thank you, Imran. 
Um, just before uh, we move on to uh, the actual uh, national highways uh, overview, I just want to give you a quick introduction to Connected Places Catapult, as you might not know who we are. And next slide, please. So we are, we are the UK Innovation Accelerator for Cities, Transport and Places. We are an independent non-for-profit organization providing impartial and innovation as a service for public bodies and infrastructure providers. Uh, we are, uh, can we move on to the next slide, please? We are one of the nine technology and innovation center uh, in the Catapult network. Uh, so you can see all our office location on this map. We have over 40 locations across the UK. Next slide, please. Uh, to this day, we have uh, de delivered 20 cohorts across nine different programs, supporting over 100 SMEs uh, in their journey. Next slide, please. Uh, we are very connected into the innovation landscapes with a network of over 4,500 startups. We also have a wide academic network of innovators. We provide the collaborative space to bring everyone together and spark and accelerate innovation. We are a neutral convening power that give our network access to funding, opportunities, uh, commercial partners and policymakers. Um, I'd like to now hand over back to Imran and would we'll give you a quick overview of national highways. So uh, National Highways was established in 2015. We're a government-owned public funded company, previously known as Highways Agency. Then we moved across to Highways England and now we're called National Highways. So everything we do from designing our roads to clearing our incidents helps keep traffic moving 24 hours, 365 days a year. So working with the Department for Transport and other government bodies to ensure investment in our road delivers a maximum benefit for our taxpayers. Next slide, please. So our three imperatives are safety, customer, and delivery. Next slide, please. So safety, we're one of the safest motorways in, in the world, as mentioned previously. The large renewal program for our safety barriers, cut high risk roads, accidents, cluster and potential suicide cluster areas. We've improved information to drivers to help them be safe on all our roads. Next slide, please. So here you can see we've managed and improved over 4,300 miles of motorways and major roads in England, known as Strategic Road Network. So as you can see on the screen, here's a few stats and facts. Just some of them I can just read out for you guys. 20,000 bridges and structures, 150,000 signs, 100,000 street lights. So as you can imagine, we've got big assets across our network. Just leave that for a few seconds. To the next slide, please. People rely on our roads. So I'll give you some, some big stats here. So 96 billion miles traveled on our strategic road network every year. 34% of all traffic um, across our network and 68% of all freight. So as you can imagine, the Amazon parcels across to anything being delivered for Christmas or New Year's, 68% of our freight is using our network. I'll leave that there for a few seconds. Next slide, please. So we care about community that live alongside our road. Since 2015, we have committed over 528 million to projects where we have reduced noise, alleviated flooding, protected biodiversity, reduced air pollution, produced alternative routes for walkers and cyclists. Next slide, please. So here you can see a map across where we operate and um, you can understand how big the challenges are in reducing carbon and how we need to innovate to support achieve our net zero target. And for me, I'll move across to my colleague, Mel, who will take over from me. Thank you very much. Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for being here. And thanks to Hagat and Imran for introduction about the catapult and uh, National Highways. Uh, I'm Melissa Giusti. I'm Principal Innovation Advisor at National Highways. Uh, I worked in innovation for about six years now and um, with the catapult on uh, a number of different projects and programs. So today, um, I'm here uh, to talk to you about the challenge 
challenge areas that we are, uh, these challenge areas uh, have been a product of an extensive engagement with experts from national highways. And um, these are also from um, one of our, our, our target, which is uh, being carbon neutral by 2040 in construction and maintenance. This target is also, it is included in our net zero strategy. I'm sure you can find the link to the strategy in the provided uh, materials on the Catapult website. Please take the time to read it through and um, yeah, have a nosy and see what uh, our targets are around um, net zero. Uh, can I have the next uh, slide, please? Okay, so here we have the four challenges, well, three challenges that we have identified through our work around alternative materials, decision making uh, for asset management, uh, and uh, enablers for circular economy in construction and maintenance. And we have also an open challenge. Um, the challenge choice um, has been, um, as I said, a uh, um, shared um, process and uh, it was uh, around finding the right balance on um, choosing the uh, most prominent um, activities that are impacting uh, emissions from national highways uh, and of course also finding uh, challenges that are most suited for this type of program. Um, in addition also to um, yeah, other targets that we have and uh, uh, the ability of national highways to leverage and influence the change. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, we go in a bit more in detail of each one of the challenges here. Um, the first one is alternative materials. This has been our first challenge because we know that uh, yeah, a big chunk of our emissions in construction and maintenance are around the, the, these, the, the materials that we use to build and maintain our network. Uh, and of course, for cement, concrete, asph asphalt and steel, you can just imagine that even just the, the chemical process around these materials are uh, uh, impactful in terms of emissions. So um, yeah, we looking to see if there is anything that could be game changer in, in building and maintaining our, our network. Uh, we know that there are some already some products that can deliver up to 30% reduction in, in emissions, but uh, beyond those, uh, we would like to see more and more groundbreaking innovations. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the second challenge is around decision-making enablers for asset management and uh, all life value of assets. Um, within our remit of uh, running and operating the network, of course, uh, it, it comes also the, the big challenge of uh, asset management and maintenance. So um, we look in on innovations that can provide us uh, with um, decision-making enablers um, to considering, of course, the whole life cycle value and including carbon emissions. Um, yeah, for, for your innovations, we would like also to see anything that is around maintenance choice, planning, uh, planning maintenance and predictive and preventing intervention. Next slide, please. Um, the last challenge is, and the last set challenge is around digital and non-digital enablers for circular economy in construction and maintenance of highways assets. Um, of course, as you can imagine, uh, we um, constantly do and redo uh, our network uh, to maintain uh, that at the highest standards. Uh, what we're looking here for is innovation that can 
contribute to reusing, redeploying and recycling materials and assets in construction. Uh, as you can imagine, some material are already recycled, but probably not at the highest at the highest value. Uh, if your innovation can contribute to uh, recycling maintain recycling materials to the highest value. Uh, yeah, that, that is what we want to see. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as I mentioned, we've looked for these challenges at the major emissions um, activities, and we looked at what we're doing already uh, within the business, but um, we don't want to uh, exclude anything. So if you have an idea that doesn't quite fit in the three ch main challenges, please uh, apply anyway, because uh, we don't want to miss out. And uh, we know that there are some challenges that are not strictly related to uh, construction and maintenance, but we, we would like to hear about them anyway. Uh, for example, we know that um, a big contribution on emissions for construction and maintenance is the transport of materials and assets. Um, however, these um, is like more appropriate to look into our 2050 targets of reducing all all the emissions from um, the strategic network to zero. Uh, but yeah, anyway, we don't want to um, leave out anything. So if you've got a great idea, uh, just get your application in. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is my last slide. Um, I've been talking about the challenges. Uh, I'll be open to questions in 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 the Q and A. Uh, but also, I want to because this is a program that is designed to um, uh, help innovators. Uh, I just want to point you out our supply chain sustainability school. It is a platform um, where there is a free learning environment and upskilling for those working in the built environment sector. Uh, National Highways is a partner of this platform. Uh, please just uh, have a have a look in in that. It's free. Um, signing up is easy. Um, just uh, yeah, get on the link, uh, search in the partner, get on the National Highways link, and you'll find some. Uh, learning pathways, among which also net zero and sustainability. And uh, please remember to, um, in your signing in process, please remember to mention that you heard uh, about the platform from National Highways. Thank you. I'm handing back over to my colleagues and uh, Catapult now. Thank you, Mel. Um, yeah, so you can find uh, all the uh, information that um, Mel has given on our website. There is a specific documentation uh, document uh, on the page that covers the program scope, uh, which gives you even more detail of uh, the type of solution we are looking for and also um, what is excluded, what we don't don't really want to see. Uh, so using that document, you should be able to have all the information you need to um, make your application. Uh, I'm not going to uh, share more details about the competition itself and the application process. Um, thank you. Uh, so we are looking, uh, so this is a great opportunity for startups and uh, small companies, but also national highways existing supply chain uh, to get the chance to try the solution on the strategic road network. Um, this competition will be in two phases. So the first phase will be July and August, and then there will be a selection process uh, in September, and uh, then there will be the second phase between October and mid 2024. Um, we are looking to select up to 10 SMEs uh, and uh, up to five existing suppliers to take part in the phase one. And then uh, we, select a we will select a number of these companies to move to the second phase. Um, you will, um, can I get the next slide, please? Uh, as part of this program, so it's, you will get uh, it's a funding opportunities because you will get uh, between uh, fifteen to thirty thousand um, pounds to uh, for the phase one and up to eighty thousand pounds for the phase two. Uh, you will also obviously receive a coaching, mentoring, trial support, uh, deployment support, 
um, during the full length of the program. At the very end of the program, mid 2024, we will have a showcase event um, where you will uh, get the chance to present what you've accomplished uh, to the industry. Uh, so, so there is a lot uh, of reason why you should apply to this competition. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so just to go back to the program structure, so um, the phase one, uh, you will work with your on your trap proposal, so you will be paired up with um, uh, with a tier one partner. So we have five tier one partners that have signed up so far to be part of this program. So those are Amy, Costain, Colas, uh, Balfour BT, uh, and Kier. Uh, so you will be paired up with uh, one of those partners and you will have the chance to get access to their subject matter expert, uh, as well as access to, to people in national highways and people in connected places catapult to uh, refine uh, your uh, trap proposal. Uh, so um, as part of this exercise, uh, we will discuss with you what would be the best place uh, to to do your testing, uh, what does it involve in terms of safety, uh, etc. Um, in September, as I said, we will select a number of the company move to phase two. So there is a possibility that all of you will be uh, selected for phase two, uh, but National Highway uh, reserved the right to uh, discount some companies if we, we think that the trial is not suitable. Uh, we will then move to uh, the trial implementation phase. So that's from October to mid 2024. Uh, so during that uh, period, it's really um, having your trial implemented, but also offering you business support. So uh, it can be really anything that you need. So we'll have a discussion with you and we will make sure that we can provide a tailored expertise and tailored um, support to your actual needs. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, now I'm just going to cover the application process uh, in more detail. So next slide. So uh, we launched uh, the application in 27 of March. So you can already apply now. Uh, and the application will close at the end of this month. So 30th of April. You can always, um, when you are uh, on the page, uh, it always saves automatically. Uh, but uh, so you don't have to do everything in one go. Uh, and we will send you reminders uh, closer to the closing date to make sure that you actually get your application uh, in submitted. Then we have uh, the shortlisting phase from the 3rd to the 19th of May. So that's um, National Highways, the partners uh, and Connected Places Catapult that are reviewing all the applications. Uh, and based on that review, we are inviting some of you to interviews between the 26th of May and the 8th of June. Uh, so those will be uh, divided into interviews. So the first interview will be a technical due diligence and the second one will be a commercial due diligence. Uh, so um, really, it's just going to be a different audience. Uh, the first one will be with people from Connected Places, Catapult, and technical partners uh, to really review the technical aspect of your solution. And the second one, we will be with uh, the tier ones and national highways. Um, then you can see that we have quite a quick turnaround. So uh, the week uh, of 3rd of July, uh, we will um, so in actually mid-June, you will be recommended for funding. So that's uh, because of National Highways process. They need to uh, take the um, innovation that they want to take forward to the investment decision committee. Uh, so we will know mid-June who will be uh, recommended for funding, but we will have the final decision uh, the first week of July. Um, once we have this decision, we can uh, actually launch a program and we will have a welcome day um, that will normally take place in our London office on the 10th of July. Then we ha you have all this time until the end of August to uh, re re refine your trial proposal. And then um, we will have the selection for phase two uh, and uh, um, phase two starting in October. Next slide, please. Uh, so how to apply? So we need, you need to go to our website. You will need to first sign up uh, to the website and create your profile, and then you can actually apply for the, for the program. Um, so uh, as I said, we are looking for 10 companies uh, that have a solution that we would prefer to be between TRL 5 and 7, because obviously you need to have something that is ready to be actually tested uh, to be a part of the program. Um, obviously, you need to at least um, you know, uh, answer one of the three challenges uh, that have uh, been set out. Um, 
and uh, we are really here to help you. So if you have any accessible needs, accessibility needs uh, to apply and you're having stru struggle with the platform, please just give me a shout and I will be uh, more than happy to, to help anyone that, that needs a hand. Um, next slide, please. Uh, and finally, I'm just going to cover the application criteria. So uh, we will have um, six criteria and you can see the weightings uh, on on the screen. Uh, but so first the solution. So how does your solution address at least one of the challenge? Uh, innovation, how is it unique? What is your unique selling point? Do you have any IP? Do you have any patents? Um, then it's all around the trial design. So, um, you know, have you decided define clearly what you want to test, um, what's uh, the timeline of your trial, um, what are you expecting to achieve. Uh, then uh, we have the team and the budget. So um, what are the roles and the skill within your company uh, that will enable you to deliver this trial? Um, is the budget you set uh, between so uh, I just want to clarify that the budget we are asking at this minute is uh, the budget for the phase one. So between the 15,000 and 30,000. Um, and you can find more details about this in the documentation that is given on the website. Uh, and then market understanding and traction, you know, who are already your customers. Um, it, it can be customers that are not part of this industry, but you're just, you know, just showing um, you, what is your growth plan and, and, and so on. And finally, impact monitoring and evaluation. So uh, how do you plan to uh, measure the short term and long term uh, benefit uh, of your uh, solution? Um, please, when writing your application, make sure that you use layman terms because not all, everyone that will be reviewing your application will be a technical person. So try to make it clear and easy to understand for everyone. Just it gives you a better shot of uh, a better chance of being selected. Um, but again, you can find all this information with a lot of details uh, on the website. Um, that is all I wanted to cover for today. I hope uh, you found this. Um, useful and I'm not gonna so if we can have the last slide so here is my email address just if you uh, want to ask me any questions uh, but we're gonna move uh, to the Q&A uh, part of this session uh, thank you so much for joining um, I'm just gonna invite Mel and uh, Imran to come back on screen uh, to help me answer all the questions that we are receiving in the chat um, so uh, we have a couple of questions uh, that are about um, uh, that I think I'm going to need your help with, Mel. So <laughs> uh, the first question is, is a project looking at modular units which can be dismantled and reused made from low carbon cement in scope? It is in scope of the open challenge. We have, um, yeah, we have talked about 3D printing and modular building, uh, but we thought uh, it was more like um, yeah, it wasn't like the first choice for our challenges, but yeah, there is the potential to apply for the open challenge for that type of uh, proposals. Thank you, Mel. Uh, if you change the material and our processes, you change the competency demand profile. Is this kind of thinking that taken into account? I guess is what we want to understand uh, in this in this phase, of course. Um, we yeah we 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 doing these innovation to like learn along the alongside with our innovators and to understand what we need to be pre prepared for in the in the next years in the next decades if we want to achieve the net zero target so yeah it is taken into account i, I think there is also yeah, uh, within our um, conversations on scoping the challenges, we've had also some conversation around the yeah, potential innovation solutions that can deliver upskilling or uh, yeah, reskilling of stuff. Thank you, Ma. Um, the other question is, can we submit more than one uh, application? Uh, we have two that falls into two different challenges. The answer is yes, you can submit several bids. Uh, you don't have to only submit one. So if you have um, different proposals, just um, you need to set us. I, I, I believe you can start them at the same time or you can do one after the other. But yes, you can submit more than one. Um, how much detail are you looking for in the application process? Well, really uh, put as much as you can. There is a limit in, in the word um, 
in the world you can add, but uh, you know, write as much as you can uh, because the more detail we have, the more uh, we can have a, a good idea of what you you're trying to uh, to explain. So um, you can see in the on the website there is a link to the application questions, and you can see that there is a word limits for each questions. But um, really, uh, provide as much detail as you can. Um, would an open challenge possibly cover the 28th of March transport data strategy issued by the, issued by the government, which includes the sharing and discoverability of data? I'm not familiar with this strategy, so I don't know if Melissa, you know about it. I know about the strategy. I've just had a glance to it. Uh, to be fair, I haven't gone into the full data details of it, but um, yeah. I would say if uh, yeah, if there is anything that can take that can be taken into account, then yes. Thank you. Um, just trying to. So, what are the partners looking for? Um, I guess I can give an answer to this one, and Mel, you can come in and add more if you if, if you want. So, uh, the partners on this program, obviously. Uh, so, uh, it's a program that is. Um, sponsored by uh, National Highways, but ultimately the, the partners are the one who will be um, implementing the, 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 the solution. So uh, it is for them to also, um, you know, they also have targets uh, that they need to hit, uh, but uh, it's really, they are working uh, in partnership with National Highway and uh, it might, uh, you know, um, for, for them, it's, it's a great way to discover new things that they will be uh, able to uh, implement uh, as in their business as usual as well. I don't know if Mel, you want to add anything? Uh, no, not, nothing more to add, but yes, of course, also the supply uh, chain and our main suppliers, they've got their own uh, targets and, and of course the uh, influence by uh, cascading of our targets. So they've, they, they're keen to no innovations as well. Thank you. Uh, will it be only one SME that gets uh, uh, to the a phase two funded project? So no, uh, all the SMEs have the chance to get to the phase two. Uh, it's just that we have uh, a bit of a gate between phase one and phase two, uh, just to only uh, fund the project that uh, are the most relevant uh, for for national highways. Um, so they just uh, the res national highway reserve the right to not move forward with all of them, but really what they want is to be able to say we want to, to, to test all of them. Uh, so no, there is a potential for all companies to go to phase two. Uh, does the solution need to be at QL5 to 7 now or can this be achieved by October 2023? Uh, so no, so if you can demonstrate that uh, by, 2020, by October your uh, solution will be ready to trial, then that is completely fine. You just need to make that clear in your application. Uh, I'm just trying to get through the question. They keep on coming more and more. Um, and some people are asking the same question again. Where can we find the tier one and tier two existing supplier to engage with potential joint application? Um, I'm not too sure I have the list. I don't know. Um, but you could, I don't know, do you know if there's a list of all your existing suppliers? There may be on our uh, website, I believe. But yeah, on yeah, you can find a lot of information online. I can't really get you the uh, correct link. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I think also that the supply chain sustainability school is a good place to look for yeah the type of organization that uh, we work with. Thank you, Ma. Are solutions around improving carbon calculators considered relevant? I would yeah yeah. Yes, I would say so. Um, and sorry, I should have mentioned uh, National Highways has been recently awarded the PAS uh, 2080 um, certification. So, um, yeah, we now have yeah um, carbon management in place. Uh, there are some um, specific calcula carbon calculators that have been developed within the organization but i guess yeah if you think that you've got something innovative you want we want to hear 
Thank you. Uh, would you be able to provide the link to the application page? Yes, of course, we can provide the link to the application page. That's not a problem. It will be in the email, uh, the th thank you email from joining the webinar. Uh, you will have the link in, in that email. Um, otherwise, maybe um, I can try to put it in the chat, but I'm multitasking in a minute. It's not easy. Um, but I will try to put it before we, the um, this webinar is over. Um, who will be reviewing the applications? It's a great question. There were actually quite a lot of people have volunteered to review the applications. So um, we have uh, so people from Connected Places Catapult because we have our experts in house uh, who will be reviewing uh, the trial aspect of things um, and also the net zero. We have net zero experts. We have people from uh, National Highways who will be reviewing the applications. Uh, we have people from the the tier one's partners, so the five, five one that I've listed earlier, they will also be reviewing the applications. So uh, really uh, quite a few people are gonna be reviewing the applications. Um, can we provide video or diagram in the application? Um, so you can definitely add links to videos uh, uh, in, in your application. Um, and there is a, a place where you can add um, a, a pitch deck. So if you have a diagram, you can add, add it as part of your pitch deck. If there's something you want to add that you don't manage to add, uh, please just email me and I will try to find a way to uh, have it incorporated into your into your application. Uh, is there a scope to add more partners? Uh, yes, there is always scope to add more partners. Uh, you can reach out to me directly and we can have a, a chat uh, offline. Um, who selects the project partners? Do we select one? Uh, could you list the partners again? So um, we will do a bit of a, a matchmaking um, between the partners and, and, the, and the SMEs that are selected. So if you would like to work with a specific partner, you can um, definitely mention it in your application. Uh, but uh, we would also look at uh, from the partner side uh, they will have to let us know the one that they would prefer to work with. And then we can just do a bit of a matchmaking exercise and make sure that everyone is paired with the relevant partner. Um, I can list again the partners. They are Colas, Costain, Balfour BT, Amy, and Kier. Um, if you propose a new material, say recycled plastic, is it possible to discuss other uses for it that National Highway may know of, but we don't realize? Um, yes, so yes, basically uh, you will submit your trial proposal and then we have this discovery phase, this trial proposal phase where we're actually going to discuss all different type of use cases that uh, your material could be used for. Uh, and that's, you know, kind of like that exercise is here to be able to find the best uh, use case to trial for the phase two. I hope that has answered the questions. Um, we have got a new but very experienced team in the field, but that will mean our TRL is not five to seven yet. Are we eligible to apply if we have a good application? So yes, you can apply. We say it's preferable to be five to seven just because uh, by our experience, usually if, if the TRL is lower, it means that you're not quite ready to be testing your solution. Uh, but if you are able to uh, prove in your application that your um, solution is ready yet, uh, or already, you know, you, you can have something to trial by October, uh, then we will welcome your application. Uh, do you need more tier one companies to support with this? If yes, how does a company apply for that? Please just reach out to me and we can discuss this offline. Uh, it's great to see that we have uh, both from uh, applicants and potential partners so much uh, enthusiasm in, in this uh, webinar. Can you liaise with a partner and get pre endorsement for your idea? Um, yeah, and we know that our Tier one partners have already reached out to their um, to their supply chain to the to the SMEs that they have in their network to um, um, you know to promote this opportunity. So if you, as I said, if you want to already start this conversation with a partner, if you want to uh, mention it in your application, that's totally fine with us. Um. Yeah, you will just need to, uh, sorry, I'm just reading. A lot of people are, uh, as I said, have been like the trial partners have already asked them to submit a proposal. You, you can just mention it in your uh, application. There is no specific question for it, but I guess uh, if in the trial design question, you can mention at the beginning that you've been in touch with Kia or whoever it is. 
going to be publishing the Q&A along with the webinar recording. Um, I will uh, take those questions and uh, I will add them as an FAQ on the, on the application guidance. Um, are time sensitive journey oriented zero emission vehicle for highway maintenance operative in scope? Mel, back to you. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> bit of a difficult question and is very much yeah at the boundary I would say because as I mentioned uh, like the, the transport in general has been discarded by these main challenges because we have another target which is 2050 uh, full net zero um, uh, SRN so but I do understand that is this is yeah very much around more um I would say if you really think that is innovative and can comply with the open challenge it, it may be something but yeah it's a bit out of scope because we're not looking into um vehicles emissions for these uh, specific program. Thank you, Ma. Uh, no problem. If the innovation we have is more a process than challenges the current construction methods by combining smarter logistic low carbon manufacturing that reduces the installation time and resources required, would this be something of interest? Uh, yes, open open challenge is is around the yeah, um, standardizing, um, yeah. Um, construction and yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so this one is says four national highways at the beginning. So definitely for you, Mel. This was mentioned uh, of technology that can supply data and metrics. What is covered within the scope? Congestion data, emission data, such as gas level detection, type of vehicle, volume of vehicle. Is this relevant for national highways? I guess this comes back to the fact that it's 2050 and we're not looking at vehicle for this particular competition yeah unless it's applied very specifically to a building site but yeah um yeah not not really looking at vehicles for these um for this challenge for this program because it it is very much it we're not with national highways doesn't build vehicles so we've got yeah limited influence there I guess the next question is going to be the same answer. So under open challenge is development of ammonia dual fuel technology to reduce emission in scope for the material transport vehicle or excavator. Again, yeah, again, yeah. it's yeah, it's a bit at the boundary again because it relates to vehicles and machineries and it's, it's not really for us to decarbonize. Uh, that industry and and there are already a lot of uh, activities around those. Yeah. Oh, so this one is quite lengthy. So please bear, bear with me while I, I read it. <laughs> have a look on the on the chat box then. Uh, so it's we have a new software trying to locate ideal spot for new highway EV charging stations. This has potential application in understanding whether converting existing gas station to EV charging would be sufficient or new service location exits to highways will be needed to build. So this software will help with asset management in an indirect way. Would this fit under the open call? I think this again is very much related to EV to vehicles, charging yeah. and vehicles. So it's a bit of another, yeah, another type of um, challenge that we're trying to tackle. And uh, there are already um, some initiatives uh, that National Highways is is progressing on in that sense. So it's not not very much for us. Thank you, Matt. Uh, tier one suppliers and national highways are large organizations. We would need the specific contact of the tier one and national highway contact that are involved with this program. Is this information available? So from national highway, your main contact is Melissa and Imran that are here on the call today. Um, and they will be able to um, guide you through uh, other people within the company if needed. Uh, for the tier ones, uh, I am not at liberty to give any names uh, now, uh, but um, 
if you are selected, we will just put you in touch with the relevant people. We are working with people that are either uh, in the innovation department or that are uh, in the carbon related part of their company. So we have selected uh, really the, the people that are close to those challenges uh, within each uh, organization. Um, will our, will our sisters, oh, do we, we will we, we have, I can't read anymore. Um, so will we uh, have assessors who have expertise in human performance and management in context of carbon transition? So yes, so we'll have assessors that are um, going to be able to look at those things. Uh, we will look at the applications. Uh, if they are uh, specific ones that uh, would need a specific experts to be reviewed, uh, we will just uh, send this application to the, to the correct person to have the um, correct uh, you know, review and input from them. Um, we create commodities from waste tires, the hydrocarbon we, we create, the hydrocarbon we create looks suitable for road construction and repair. Would the development of this product come under the scope of this competition? So that very clear question. Um, sorry. Um, so they're creating hydrocarbon that is suitable for road construction or repair. So I would guess that it is in scope yes, of alternative yes, material. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I can see the question. Yeah. So yes, I would say yes, definitely. Uh, will there be different expert judging panels for each challenge area? Yes, we are having different uh, panels and different experts that will be linked to each challenge to make sure that, again, new application is reviewed by the right people. Do you match applicants who may be better combining to solve a common uh, or overlapping problem? No, unfortunately, we do not um, match applications together. Um, but uh, we, 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 we've been asked in the past, so we, we do not do that, uh, unfortunately. So um, I'm, I'm afraid this, this is a no. But but you can that's what I but it brings me to actually a point I forgot to mention you if you know another company that could uh, apply with you you're allowed to apply as a consortium you just need to have a lead applicant that would be the person uh, submitting the application and uh, receiving uh, the funding and and so on but you can apply as a consortium uh, but we do not mm, do a, um, an overlapping and, and a combining of two solutions uh, ourselves but you are allowed to apply with someone else. If you feel the applicants has applied to the wrong challenge, would you redirect them to a more appropriate challenge area? Yes, we will. Uh, uh, if we if we feel that your application would be better suited in a different challenge, we will just assign your application totally. I think I've answered. We've answered all of it, Mel. I'm just looking. Excellent. Am I missing any? I don't think I. Um, I can't see. Is there any more coming through? Will you share the presentation? Yes, I can share the slides. Uh, they would be, uh, we can link them as well uh, when we share the, the link of the recording. We can add the presentation as well. Um, great. I will wait a few more uh, seconds to see um, if we have more questions coming through. Uh, Mel and Imran, thank you so much for joining today. Uh, I'm just, uh, I don't see any more questions coming. We have two more minutes before uh, we just wrap this up. No, there's like there's no more questions. If you do have more questions that pops to your mind, uh, you can uh, obviously email me uh, at any point. Uh, my email is on the website. It's also on the slides that will be shared. So uh, just feel free to, to email me at any point. Just a quick reminder, applications closing at the 30th of April at midnight. Um, and yeah, um, thank you so much for joining. Uh, I hope uh, you found this session informative. Uh, and uh, I hope to see your applications coming in.